which nothing, nothing teaches us, I think, better than learning how to be in service to children. Mm. I've often said, because I sit with many women um, of all ages, but have really come up, you know, anywhere from like 28 to (laughs) 65 women find me, but I have often um, held a point of really supporting women as they move, I would say, through change, through transition, you know, you know, 38 into 43, you know, 47 into 53. Like I definitely hold that point, but I also have ended up holding a lot of women through that place of pregnancy and birth. Um, And what I have learned is that the more that we can show up as we are, take it step by step by paying attention to our body and remembering ourselves. And there's no greater way I think of doing that than being in service as a mother. With girlfriends of a certain age in midlife, we got a lot to say. So let's get loud. We won't fade away. Cause we're girlfriends of a certain age. Hey, girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend. Happy Monday. <laughs> I'm good. You know, we, we were dancing with technology. You know, it happens, but we're, we, we made it work, right? We did as part of the, the gift of coming together and, and figuring it out. And that's to me, that's so much about the girlfriend path and what we're doing here together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I got a little confession to make. I'm, I'm kind of fangirling over here today about our guest because mm-hmm. she's someone who I hold very near and dear to my heart. And so I feel like this giddy excitement about sharing her with all the girlfriends. And uh, I know you've gotten to get to know her a little bit. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about this idea of who are we as mothers in midlife? Absolutely. It's a question I ask myself every day. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. It feels like a big opportunity. So I'm excited to introduce our guest today. Her name is Stacy Bowden. She is an energy healer, a facilitator, a spiritual mama, and the author of the amazing book, Turning Dead Ends into Doorways, which I have read twice, mm-hmm. so I highly recommend it. For over 20 years, she's been teaching badass, heart-centered, empathic women to follow energy with practical wisdom to navigate anxiety, improve relationships, embody leadership, make powerful decisions, and create amazing work. Currently, Stacy hosts a podcast. She sees private clients, holds women's dance ceremonies online, and she mentors recovering type A change makers, teaching them how to follow energy and let go Mm. of control and embrace a more resilient and joyful power in life and work. Mm. And you can visit Stacy at dancing-tree.com. Of course, I have her link down below so you can learn all about her. And I have to add in a little personal piece, which is that I've known Stacy for almost 25 years. I've done some of these dance rituals and ceremonies with her. She's mentored me in a leadership capacity around that, some of that ceremony. And she was also my doula for my first baby. Oh, for Elliot. For my Elliot. And so I have this beautiful history with Stacy, and to now be dancing with her in this capacity as, as podcasters and, and approaching us from this very girlfriend uh, uh, perspective here on our podcast. So Stacy, welcome to Girlfriends of a Certain Age. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. And I'm honestly trying not to cry right now (laughs) because it's a lot of history. I was thinking about that too, that we go back over 20 years and all the different places. And I'm so honored to be here. I just love what the two of you are doing Mm -hmm. and creating a space to really, you know, settle in and enjoy and get loud in our midlife Mm -hmm. capacity as women. I have been Um, in service to women through my energy healing work for over 20 years. And so a big part of what inspires me to keep showing up is how much I absolutely respect and adore and love women. (laughs) So, you know, any way that we can support them in getting louder and bigger and relaxing more into themselves um, in midlife is amazing. And I'm on this journey with you because I'm 53. So I'm a, I'm a midlife woman too. You are officially yeah. a girlfriend of a certain age. I am. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, Stacy, your work just sounds amazing. As someone who's who's coming newer to you, I really enjoyed listening to your podcast, which I believe is the same name as your book, correct? And it's just fascinating. I, I I confess, I went to the the episode about the voice. I had to go check that out, and it was just wonderful. So, what you're doing for women um, of all ages, frankly, is is really meaningful work. Oh, thank you so much. It's really my honor, and uh, yeah, it's my honor. It's my calling. It's not separate from being a mom. You know, mm. I have two. I have two children. I've been um, married to my wonderful soulmate husband for over for thirty years now, and mm. uh, so we have raised two children together. I'm from San Francisco um, Bay Area, and I currently live in Pacifica on the coast of San Mateo. And we, you know, we had our kids we young, and so I have a 27 year old daughter um, and a 24 year old son, and. I would say being a conscious parent um, has and being in a conscious relationship with my husband too, has really been the foundation um, of my life. And it's also been the foundation of my work because they came in together. I started developing and moving into my own training while I was literally pregnant with my daughter 27 oh. years ago. So it's all related and I'm happy to um, connect, you know, with all of it to be in service to whatever it is you feel like your women, girlfriends, mm -hmm. um, whatever you feel like they need to hear. I am, I'm right. I'm right with you. And I remember early on seeing how you were so much in the mothering phase. You had young children. And I remember wondering, how does she hold all of that? How is she holding such a big container for all of us to do this spiritual and emotional and sometimes even physical work? I remember even doing breath work with you. And then here you were going home to little children. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had no children at the time. I remember marveling at how is she holding all of it? How, when you look back on it, how do you, how do you think of it? Well, you know, I would say the root of my life is something called following energy. So that I, you know, I consider myself to be a somatic energy um, healing practitioner, a guide, uh, facilitator, spiritual mama, and really learning how to follow things step by step by step by step get behind things like being in service to children being in service as a mother being in service to groups and individuals um has taught me you know really how to show up and learning how to frankly do it in a way that i'm also paying attention to myself what i love about following energy it it, it stems from earth-based ways and it's an oral teaching that I received early on through the Center for Sacred Studies, which is where I did my training uh, over 25 years ago. And the, the oral teaching is don't get ahead of the energy, stay behind the energy. And it's based on original peoples, which is really holding all life as an opportunity to grow relationship. So that has really been the foundation of um, how I live, how I teach, how I show up, how I learn to hold. And the more that we learn to practice, I would say, relaxing into the stretch of holding it all, which nothing, nothing teaches us, I think, better than learning how to be in service to children. Mm. You know, I've often said, because I sit with many women um, of all ages, but have really come up you know, anywhere from like 28 to <laughs> 65 women find me, but I have often um, held a point of really supporting women as they move, I would say, through change, through transition, you know, you know, 38 into 43, you know, 47 into 53. Like I definitely hold that point, but I also have ended up holding a lot of women through that place of pregnancy and birth. Um, and what I have learned is that the more that we can show up as we are, take it step by step by paying attention to our body and remembering ourselves. And the, there's no greater way I think of doing that than being in service as a mother, because there's no, frankly, I often say this, like there isn't much better spiritual training than learning how to show up day after day, minute after minute to, to a growing child. So we can do all these fancy things out in the world and it's good, it's good to do that. But frankly, I think if you want to be a conscious, awake person and you want to do that as a mother, um, showing up to be in service to your kid every day and, and stretching and holding psychically and taking care of yourself in the process um, will really train you 
how to hold more and more and more. And that's certainly what it's done for me. Mm. I, that so resonates. I really feel like my two children have been my biggest teachers. They are constantly stretching me, challenging me, inspiring me, all the things, right? And that's a wonderful way of putting it out there. I'm really curious about your energy um, kind of definition, because <laughs> one thing I feel when you say that is how often the energy shifts with children. <laughs> I have teens right now. Uh, Flaché has elementary level kids, and you have young adults. And it's such a dance as their energy shifts um, and I can speak for myself right now that there's definitely some hormonal mood swings going on. I recently went through menopause myself, so I'm in that dance with them. Um, and what you might speak on when the energy is shifting in a way that sometimes triggers a little fear because it's so unpredictable. Uh, yeah. Again, you know, children are incredible teachers for <laughs> our lives. And, and I would say one of the biggest things that they teach us for me is how to surrender, mm. how to let go, how to follow. It's that thing. I was talking about this with, with a girlfriend the other day where it's like, just when you kind of think you have it landed as a mother, the children change <laughs> and then you need to adjust to where they are. And, and totally. I have to say that that has been my experience from, again, even getting pregnant, being pregnant, mm -hmm. having babies, you know, raising them. Then they, then I have two children. They're very, very different. So even how you attune to each child, certainly birth, you know, the, the first one, the second one, there's just, it's really an incredible energy dance to be yes. quite honest. And I would say like the first five years or very physical in nature and exhausting in that way. And then the, then I would say it shifts more, you know, as you move from like whatever, six to 12 um, and they start to get a little bit more independent and able to like maybe start to put themselves to sleep or bathe themselves or like that kind of thing. It gets, it gets a little different and we start to kind of travel around with them and take them to a lot of places. And then when they move into that 14 time, um, they're starting to get their own wings more. They're starting to really practice getting out in the world. And that's a whole other kind of surrender. And, and I would say I consider it to be a dance for sure. It's very, uh, the, the work becomes very emotional in nature mm -hmm. as opposed to physical. That's what I ex have experienced for myself and also sitting with a lot of women. So it's, it's a constant teaching for me in following, yeah. you know, how do I do this? How do I show up? How do I meet my kid? you know, where is that place where I want to give them a lot of room to grow and find their own wings? And where do I need to come in as a mom and say, hey, no, practice boundaries. This is not safe. And you need to come back here now. And it's a it's mm -hmm. it's a it's an art. It's not a science. Right. There's no one book. <laughs> one method. <laughs> And I love how you refer to it as dancing and, and it feels very permissive that things will shift and change and this allowing of, of the flexibility. And um, there's, there's something that you've said to me many, many times when I'm stepping into something new, a new doorway, but you call it an initiation. And I remember how you held me and supported me through my initiation of becoming a mom and serving as a, my doula. So you use that word initiation it has um, sort of this element of fear to it, like this unknown, this unknown quality, but also a power and a choosing to, if we're being initiated, we're being brought into something usually bigger than ourselves. And for me, motherhood has been so much of that. And I can just looking at myself and who I was historically. So I was 38 when I had my first kid. And so in some ways I was already sort of into getting, moving into more of like the midlife phase. And to become a mother at that stage was, um, I think it just important for me, my soul needed to be, be that old to, to, to do that work. And so sometimes now that I'm 50, uh, you know, like it'll be late at night and my oldest, that's when he wants to start processing and all the things that have been happening throughout the day, the week, the month, the year, and he <laughs> wants to get into it. And I'm so tired at the end of the day. Right. And like, it's at nine o'clock when he's like, my heart is open and I'm ready to tell you everything. And I'm like, but I'm so tired. But then I remember too, sometimes like, well, nope, this is the time to get big. I can hold my tiredness. 
and trust that my body is going to get the rest that it needs and be fully present to hear and, and to receive and to be in his dance with him. And I wonder if either of you too have that experience. Absolutely, for sure. You know, again, like just when you think, you know, like just when I think I'm good and settled and my, it, it, and I'm talking about having a 27 year old and a 24 year old, <laughs> it still is changing. You know, we mm-hmm. thought we were moving into more empty nesthood, you know, which frankly, we are very happy empty nesters. You know, I loved, we were, you know, my husband, Alex and I were super present parents all through their whole lives. And then they went to college and we were like, okay, we're going to move from San Francisco to our little beach town, which we love and become empty nesters. And frankly, then the pandemic hit and my very independent daughter, um, 24 year old at the time, moved in with us from New York for five months. And we were suddenly, you know, living together. Now that was a huge adjustment and Mm -hmm. we did it, you know, but it's like, just when you think you have it down, just never get, you know, never assume anything, never assume that you are done until you are finished and always be open to beginning again. And I think that um, for me, mothering has been a huge lesson in that. And so, you know, Jessica, I don't know if you've had that experience also of stretching beyond your capacity. Oh, absolutely. I'm a planner at heart, you know? And so this has been such a challenge for me to be open and to be flexible. And I I feel like that has been my teaching is plan B (laughs) so often (laughs) the way to go. And sometimes it's plan C and it's plan D, but I feel like it, it pushes up against an old recovering good girl tool that earlier in my life when I didn't know how to navigate things. And frankly, sometimes as a survival tactic really needed to plan to feel safe. I've had to kind of heal that and it's, I'm a work in progress. So just sort of we've uh, what what we've had going on in our house a lot lately is this reoccurring virus that we keep sharing it. It's not COVID, but my 15 year old is in our home right now, sick home from high school. Right. And my younger son had a stomach thing. And just when you're going to think, okay, this is how Monday's going to be, you know, curveball. And, um, I'm grateful because I I can remember a time, especially when they were really young, where that was that was like such a pain point for me, you know, of like, Ugh! and and I'm proud of myself to say that I've gotten a lot better, but I will admit that there's still that little <laughs> moment where I kind of <gasps> hold my breath on, ah, what is it? And and Stacy, to what you're talking about, I'm in that shift where they are becoming more independent. And so there's such a dance where it's like independent, dependent, independent, dependent. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> where are we right now? And someone gave me some great advice uh, for teens, and I really love it. It's like when they're talking to me and complaining about something outside of our home, I'm like, is this a vent or do you want me to problem solve with you? Because my knee jerk is to go into problem solving. Sometimes, they just want to vent. So that's been helpful at certain times, but I can absolutely relate to this all. Yeah. Yeah. I really appreciate what you're saying. By the way, that's really good advice for, um, for partners and, and, and spouses too, is, is my husband after 30 years, one of the keys to our relationship is he'll say, you know, do you just need to vent right now? Or do you, is this time for me to have an opinion? <laughs> so just to say, that's a good piece of advice all around. But, oh yeah. Uh, Okay. You know, Sometimes I have to tell my husband, I'm like, I just need a good cry, honey. I just need a good cry. You don't have to fix it. <laughs> yeah, I work with I work with couples as well as individuals and in, uh, in session work, and that's a really important tip. Now, one of the things that I wanted to bring up in this dance that we're talking about of parenting and and again motherhood and how do we really learn how to get behind our kids and certainly learning how to let go, you know, mm. um, is important. And that is that place that I feel you're talking about with with I'm also a recovering type A person and I'm sometimes not so recovered. And so it really is often a dance for me between fear, you know, working with my fear, which is the thing that often gets us ahead of ourselves to keep us safe, but also keeps us small. And then the other aspect of that is surrender. And And I address this in my book, Turning Dead Ends into Doorways, which offers a framework for learning how to follow energy. And it offers up to, you know, eight teachers and the, these teachers are not human. These teachers are, are realms that we go into. And the first one is fear. 
And the last one is surrender. And so, you know, I want to say that there is a way to work with fear that is different than I've heard in a lot of more traditional personal development um, psychology, you know, systems, paradigms. And the way that I work with fear is that instead of trying to kill it, um, I invite it to sit down and have a conversation with me. I invite it to get closer so that I can really learn what is inside the fear and what the fear is trying to tell me, what kind of fear is it, what does the fear need, and then I can learn how to sort through it. And sometimes, you know, sometimes fear can be, you know, strong and something, sometimes it can be something silly, sometimes it can be um, something ancestral, sometimes it can be trauma, and, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes it can be a really small, scared, terrified part of us that needs love. And so I think that as a parent, because, you know, honestly, there are, especially nowadays, I think it's frankly, uh, my hat is off to all of you who are parenting children under 18 right now, um, because it's a very scary time to be a parent. And you are actually dealing with the, some things that I haven't had to deal with. And so how do you hold the fear? How do you work right. with this fear and not just frankly, lock your children up in a room to know that they're safe, which I would have a lot of empathy for, frankly. And for me, the yeah. ability to learn how to work with our fear, right, uh, can can help us, first of all, settle ourselves, come back to our body, come back to our wisdom, come back to our intuition, which is another teacher in my book, mm. and also can help us make better choices, you know, of like, wait a minute, is this really something that I, that, that makes sense, you know, mm -hmm. or is this something that doesn't make sense that I need to loosen a little bit my strand of attachment? So I would say like learning how to show up these days with kids as a mother, um, working with fears is really an important step. Ooh, Flashay, I feel that one. Are you feeling that one? I am. Well, and also our ability to model that for our children. And so it's something, not that I tell them every thought that I have, but there, there will be some fears that come up that I will share that with them and see even grownups are working through it. And how do we do that? And so for me to, um, you know, and I know that they're much more likely to be like me than to do what I say. Uh, and so it, it is, I, I know that I'm, you know, parenting in real time, the world is shifting and changing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, the ground is sometimes moving and we still don't know what our kids are going to how they will remember this time, this time of the pandemic and of being in quarantine and, scared parents and not leaving home, all of these things and the social ramifications and emotional and educational, we just don't know where it's all going to fall. So I think there is so much that, that mothers are holding right now. We tend to be the more flexible people in our families. And so we, we, we know, I think naturally we are more like willow trees, but it is it, it can be really hard and exhausting. I know that for me, one of my practices too is just to ask for more help. And I've become, uh, that's the recovering good girl in me. It's like, no, ask, you need help. Ask for help. She offered help. Say yes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's almost like a little angel on my shoulder reminding me, don't, don't suck it up. Don't be brave. You do need help. You do need support. You are feeling vulnerable. And, and that's been incredible. And there are so many people in my life who are available to help, who want to help. And me making room for that has also been very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you bring up a really good point. Mothering now is really, really tricky. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard. And I do think we have to work against this myth that mother knows best and mother can do it all and mother can have it all. I think that is such an archetype that I have such mixed feelings about. I love the <clears throat> feeling of feeling empowered by that because I think we do feel so powerful as mothers, but I you know, I have real mixed emotions when I hear things like, oh, it's just incredible how much you can do. And it's just, oh, the whole family would fall apart without you, mom. Right? It, it, it feels exhausting. That feels debilitating to me. I, I don't appreciate that messaging any longer. And I think the pandemic did show us that it takes a village and mothers should not be out here on their own. And there's a lot of suffering and healing, I think, that needs to happen because of that messaging. Yeah, no, I'm really with you. Again, for me, you know, the key from learning how to shift from feeling like a victim, feeling mm -hmm. stuck and overwhelmed is, you know, the key to making that shift into empowerment mm -hmm. is learning how to ask for support, learning yeah. how to identify what do I need here? You know, what do I need and, and what kind of support 
can, can come and help me. And that is really, I, I work with a lot of women on transforming codependency, you know, and I'm not talking about just transforming and forming it inside of themselves, but how do you actually practice that in daily life? And that's a lot of what I do with people is really offer following energy as a bridge practice to not only get in, in touch with what's going on inside of themselves and their bodies and learning how to sort through a lot of things, but also then how does it show up in relationship as a mother, you know, in relationship with your work as a work-life balance? Like, how do you do that? And so for me, all of this is to be practiced and there's no greater way to practice empowerment through making choices which is another teacher in my book. <laughs> so yeah, that's the key. Um, and I think that we are, hopefully it's time to shift the paradigm of the should and feeling like a victim or feeling like so many women are caught in that overdoing, overgiving, rescuing place. And it's not serving them and it's not serving our children or our families for us to do that because we, we just end up burned out and exhausted and it's time to shift the paradigm. And I'm very committed to supporting um, all people in shifting that paradigm. I'm a hell yes to that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a hell yes to that too. Because when you show your kids that um, they can be resilient, that you can be resilient, but by being like a full human who like, frankly, is winging it <laughs> every step of the way, I think it's so empowering to them. One thing I've been noticing with teens lately is they really don't want to be lectured. They don't want to have like a teachable moment. Like at least my sons like recoil from that. But what they do appreciate is when I'm honest about like, frankly, the stuff that is messiest in my life. <laughs> um, and and it's a weird thing to reveal some of those things to them. But I'm noticing that that is it. And the other stuff, frankly, they they have to just kind of live through it. Like there's moments where I'm like, oh my God, this could be so much easier if they did A, B, and C. But I'm like, it's not how I learned, you know? So just sort of trying to like show them anecdotally, well, this is what worked for me. I tried this and it was a big old mess up. It's a new way of parenting, frankly, but um it does seem to almost feel more like I'm a like a roommate landlord who who is most of the time their companion and then once in a while has to crack down on like, hey, the rent's due. Well, yeah, there's a key. Like for me, it feels like during that teenage time that we really go from being the manager to the consultant. Ah, there you go. So it's nice. that place where like, you know, you need to be invited in at some point. And the kids, as, as kids move deeper into their teens and certainly into their twenties, it's like they have their own opinions, their own ways. And at the same time, you want them to be able to be like, I need help now, you know, tell, you know, show me, but, but you need to be invited in. And it's part of that is earning that as a parent, because I think also as they grow up and certainly those teenage years is also when we become way more human where they really do start to see our humanness and they start to see us more, not fully um, because they're still very focused on themselves, but they start to notice things and they also start to notice things with their friends and their friends' parents. So I remember my kids coming home a lot in those teenage years and being like, wow, this is what's happening in this family. And wow, this is what's happening in that family. And I would say like, again, uh, something else that I think makes a big difference is a willingness as a parent, because there's that teenage um, energy that starts to come in where they really challenge us. And one of the things that I think is really important that my parents actually did with me is that when I got to that point where I really started challenging them on things that I thought they didn't do so great, their first response to me was like, yeah, you know, we really screwed that up. I am so sorry. You know, we were really doing our best and I hear you. And so always making room to own one's, one's process, own, own one's mistake, I think can go a long way, especially in those teenage years with forging that relationship and becoming a consultant that our kids want to trust and want to lean into. Want to consult with. I love that advice. That is so helpful. It is. They sniff a lecture coming a mile away, you know? So thank you. That's really a fast, a great way to look at it. Hey, girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend. Oh, I just got off a call where my other girlfriend was so confused. She is in a relationship. They're at a crossroads and she's a little divorce curious at the moment. 
Ooh, what did you tell her? Ah, I mean, what do you tell a girlfriend? It's their decision. I just wanted to be there for her and support her, but I didn't want to tell her what to do. Oh, of course. Well, it reminds me of my dear friend, Tamara Mendelssohn, who's a relationship coach and divorce expert. She's divorced herself and a mom of two, and she walks girlfriends of a certain age actually through a process of being divorce curious. Because some of us are just angry. Some of us are just feeling stuck in our relationships. But I'll give you the link and I'll leave it below for girlfriends of a certain age as well. And they can get free immediate access to this roadmap and find out from Tamara what their next steps are. Oh my gosh, that sounds so helpful. I will definitely share that link with my girlfriend. Thank you. Amazing. You're welcome. And I'll link it below for all the girlfriends listening. Awesome. Today's episode is brought to you by the five-minute work-life balance digital workbook. Do you need help achieving work-life balance? I will teach you how to take back your time and your life. You can forget about feeling guilty, overwhelmed, and out of balance. You will discover the nine unexpected strategies to achieve work-life balance. My name is Fleshe Hesh, trained as a marriage and family therapist turned business coach and a work-life balance expert for women of a certain age. I'm the mom of two. I'm a CEO published author, and a podcaster. So today, you can get access to the digital workbook, my online course, and me, your coach, for $29. This is available for a limited time, and the link is below. This might just be a really huge question, but like, how do you see the energy work play out in motherhood the most? Like, Has there been a theme that you see coming in um, to view in with motherhood, perhaps more than in other areas where you work with people. Does that question make sense? Oh, man. Well, again, I think that if mothering and being particularly a more intentional mother, that's that you want to be a conscious mom um, is your intention, then 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 I would say it's just an incredible path of empowerment all the way through. And so it's an opportunity to learn how to listen to yourself, to learn how to embody your power and learn, learn how to let go, learn how to work with your fears, learn how to practice awareness and choice. You know, it is a path of initiation unto itself, um, becoming a mom. Again, even, even the moment you decide you want to open to pregnancy is essentially a huge moment of awakening and really learning how to step into the unknown, learning how to find peace and power and joy and pleasure inside the unknown. And mothering is a journey that will just constantly invite you to wake up. So if that's, if that, and frankly, I think even if you aren't so awake, mothering will still wake you up because, <laughs> you know, because of the sheer exhaustion and because of how it is such an initiation into the center of who we are, I think. And mm -hmm. so, you know, for me, the way that I see, you know, how doesn't energy show up in our mothering, learning how to navigate energy, because not only are you, you know, being in service to a child and needing to do that physically in tangible ways that are so exhausting and so consuming, but it's also like, what, you know, where else do you have your heart on the outside of your body with how much you love your children, right? So that's, right. so that is huge. And then bring into how do you take care of yourself? You know, yes. how do you do it without losing yourself? Um, because it is so consuming. How do you practice balance in honoring what you need and learning how to listen to yourself and showing up for your child? And then, of course, there's our society and all the different ways that we, you know, that comes with such a big should. And frankly, how disempowering our society has been for women in relationship with their bodies, in relationship with their choices, in relationship with all sorts of things. So for me, you know, learning how to work with energy is not um, some woo woo thing <laughs> these days anymore. Um, you know, to me learning how to work with energy, it's just that just as we grow social and emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. energy matters. 
and that that and that it's time to really and I think our thank God our culture and our at least you know the people that I know are really stepping into the importance of learning how to read energy inside of ourselves but also in life situations read energy in groups read the energy of our children and so how doesn't energy work show up um, with mothering it shows up in all aspects of it and frankly it's almost like instead of just relying solely on the smaller box of ego or the smaller box of our society, if you actually start to open to larger listening, like learning how to work with energy, it's going to expand your choices and expand your power too. expand your support, because it's not just about you and yourself in your little box anymore, but actually growing wider to receive, you know, the wisdom that can come when we start to listen to how energy may be trying to talk to us and help us. You say that so beautifully. I, I feel so powerful now. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me too of uh, the, the theme we keep bringing up, this recovering good girl, the, the good girl, the letting her go. And I know that the more I can let her go, the more I can actually be present, the more I'm not worried about what other people think of my parenting or the choices that I make or how I said something, that I can be far more authentic to myself and what my children are needing in a given moment or what all of us are needing because it's obviously a lot of, lot of moving pieces. Uh, in the the parenting dance, I, I see how that that comes back together again. And that again, that good girl is always trying to ruin our lives, trying to keep us small and what she calls safe. But really, the freedom and the true safety is on the other side of releasing her. You know, yeah. sending her off with a kiss because she did a beautiful job getting us this far in life. And it's it's time to uh, cut down on the noise so we can hear what is needed in a given moment. I love that, Felicia, to add on to that, the idea of like a, a recovering good girl mother and all of those, you know, societal pressures that we feel as a mother. I feel like every time I catch myself kind of looking outside of myself for like how I should be as a mom, that's where I get, I get lost. I get stressed out or really fearful. And it's when I go inward and really kind of draw on that power that we're all speaking of right now. Wait, what, what works for me? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what do I need right now? What does my family need right now? That, I think, builds up this recovery good girl muscle. And I think a really kind of recovering mother muscle. The, I'm reclaiming my power. I'm letting go of all of these outside pressures and looking inward it has been a huge awakening. So I think we understand that as mothers, but I think we get tested on the daily about that practice. And in real time. That's the, I'm often struck by, oh my gosh, this thing is happening in real time and I need to respond, <laughs> not cause damage or trauma, but, uh, you know, at least not intentionally. And I'm often thinking about this. Okay. This is go time flashé. This is go yeah. time. This is not a rehearsal. <laughs> not a rehearsal. <laughs> well, and two, one of the things that I've been very present to lately in my motherhood journey is how much generational trauma mm. I have now become so much more aware of. And not that I think I can erase all of it or take care of all of it in this lifetime, but there's certain garbage that is, is present that my kids don't need the full extent of. And that if I am able to do some of that healing work, I know that has a ripple out effect too. That's, I think partly why I love working with moms so much, because when you teach a mom something, she teaches her children then they bring that information yeah. into future generations. It really is like throwing a pebble into, into, a, into a lake and that you're touching so many people because we do have that ability. We have that capacity. Yeah. I want to give a quick shout out to my mom as well, because it wasn't until I became a mother that I recognized what she managed to do as a single mom for the first several years of my um, childhood. Uh, I think she is a superhero. And I don't mean that in a cliche kind of mom superhero cape. I mean, literally. <laughs> and I would say it all the time. I don't know how you did it, mom. I don't know how you did it. But she did it. So shout out to mom and single shout moms. Out to mom. Yeah. I know. It's it's so beautiful. I think about all the ways that I appreciate appreciated my mom. Not until I was like in my 20s. Like, oh my gosh, mom, thank you for this. Thank you for that. <laughs> Stacy, are you getting any thank yous these days? 
<laughs> no, each kid is so different and so themselves and unique and expresses it each in their own way. And so it's, it's just really funny. Uh, my daughter is a total powerhouse force of nature type. And she, she's more likely to come and like cook an amazing meal for us. And she, you know, I get the cards and actually I have a mug, this mug actually is only from three years ago, but you know, for birthdays, like, what do you want? I want you to make me a mug still so that I can have you with me. So this is from her and my son who's 24, he's more likely he's a mensch. He's more likely to be the (laughs) one to give the gushy words. And and it's just, they're just different. And (laughs) and, and I'm so happy to have each of them, right. In the way that they show up and express appreciation and love. And also the way that we get to still kind of watch them fly and watch them grow their wings and then take off like that. It's really fun. Um, And I'm really grateful that they let me have them on find my iPhone still. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know where my son was and he was driving somewhere out in the snow. And I was like, is he okay? And I, I'm allowed to check on find my iPhone to make sure he's okay. So, you know, I still get to my mama's heart still gets to be assured that way. So it's good. Ah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I mean, we're never done, right? We're never done. It's just ever evolving, isn't it? Yeah, but you can turn off your phone and that's really, (laughs) it's really important. I would say too, I would, one of my, you know, things is that um, as much as we love our children and want to show up for them as mothers, I would say it's really important to keep, to really remember to keep feeding your own identity beyond being a mom. Um, mm-hmm. That that as much as I was very present mother and I am a very present mother when they both went off to college and started you know moving out, um, you know I had a few weeks that I took to like integrate, but beyond that I started to get really excited about my free time and really excited about getting to just focus on what made me happy and what makes my husband happy and really getting to frankly give all of my um, attention to my energy healing work, which is my passion and my love. And so to no longer be holding space for both as Flaché has pointed out, you know, from that early age, it was really raising my children and my energy healing work at the same time. And it grew something in me that I don't regret. And I said a lot of no's to my work to show up for my kids because I knew I couldn't get that time back. And I has, would have had some privilege to be able to do that, right? Because there was a two income household in our family. And it's really awesome to get to give myself at this stage of life so fully to my energy healing work, to the women that I serve, to the groups, to following energy. It's, it's beautiful. So I, so I want to offer that up as well. I love that. That's really a wonderful gift for us who are still in the throes of it to start, you know, dreaming up what empty nesting can look and feel like. Because again, because we have so much fear-based messaging coming at us, that can be something that people are so worried about. They're going to fall apart. It's going to be the end of the world. I have to confess, I'm already making little plans. (laughs) Like, oh, our travel budget just will increase. Where are we going to go? You know, and uh, what, um, what hobbies can I maybe do that I just never quite feel like I have the time to. So thank you for kind of giving uh, us permission to, to dream up those things, you know? I feel like I'm following so far behind. Just the other day, my husband and I were talking like 11 years, we just need to, you know, get through these next 11 years. And then And it was like, like the kids will be moving on. And so what are we moving on to? And it really shifted my thinking of like, I could do 11 years on my head. I mean, the the first 11 years sure have gone by fast. I know these next 11 are going to fly by. And so my, my work is to stay very present in that. And because I'm still in this generating phase of my career, doing both and how I'm like raising, I started my business doing that to have my baby on my hip and be coaching at the same time. And so it's interesting to see. I wonder what it will be like for me when those 11 years have, have come and gone and I'm getting the kids more launched. What will I be wanting to create new then? And I, knowing me, it'll be a gazillion things because I, I have too many ideas. I love it. It'll be awesome. Yeah. Well, Stacy, we'd love to play a little game with you. We love to do this with our guests. And uh, it's to ask you a simple question. So are you game? Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. So Stacy. Um, what are you not giving a shit about anymore at this stage of your life that perhaps the good girl in you or that plan A person you mentioned before used to worry 
a lot about. Yes, I confess, because I did listen to some of your amazing previous podcasts. So mm-hmm. I heard the question and I've been sitting with it. And I actually, you know, agree with with boundaries for sure. You know, but some of you, you know, like just really, you know, not being liked. I think Flaché was what you mentioned, being at peace and then also having more boundaries. Mm-hmm. And within that, I think inside is about really trusting myself. So not giving a shit um, that people don't understand me maybe, or that they don't um, understand my relationship with my intuition that back in the day in my twenties, when I first started out, you know, people didn't know what energy healing work was. They, and so it's like, what do you do for a living? It's like, well, I'm an energy worker and I'd have, and for frankly, a really long time, I needed to tolerate a lot of like, huh, what, what's that? What, huh? And it really is only, and I, and I decided to not become a therapist um, because I really felt like there's power and really deep core healing in learning how to work with energy and energy in our bodies. And that was before somatics became a thing. That was before, you know, all, all, you know, all the embodiment work that is coming out now. And so I really needed to trust myself and I really needed to be able to rest into my intuition, telling me to stay with healing work and energy healing work until it frankly landed into itself. And it's really only been in the last, you know, I would say decade or even seven years that there's something called energy healing. And now we have somatic embodiment work. Um, And I've been here for over 20 years. And so there's something about learning how to stay with trusting my intuition, even though it didn't make any sense and really dropping any shame more than just fear Mm -hmm. dropping any fear you know and shame around that that has has been such a good thing for me to let go of from my 20s because I think I used to be more you know well 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 but now I'm like yeah it's actually pretty damn cool and actually it's the wave of the future and and I hope that you will you know open to it for yourself and if it's not for you I can absolutely hear that but if you want you know, want to experience a whole other level of your own power, you know, come on over, come on in, let's get to know each other. And so, you know, I think it's that definitely that, that shift. Okay. We got to snap to that because it's all around now, energy healing, the body keeps the score, all of this research coming out about how much we're still holding on. And after the pandemic, we all absolutely get how crucial this is. So for you to be a young woman and to get challenged like that and tested like that. I mean, I can relate as a creative person, like you went to theater school. Wait, what? You know, all that kind of stuff. But the the fact that you had a, kind of a, a, a calling that so many people couldn't understand and were reflecting back, testing questions. And I'm, I can imagine a lot of negative um, judgments and for you to be where you are today and to be like sharing this, I already feel all this energy shifting around in our group. And I really do believe that people who are listening to us right now are feeling it as well. I feel like there's a huge kind of communal sigh coming from mothers. Mm. And I just want to thank you for really, truly being that badass young woman who was able to do that. Honestly, it was always motivated by love, motivated by love and service and, you know, really wanting to support women. And that's also why I was a birth doula, um, because because I also agreed with, you know, Flaché that if you empower a woman, you know, who is the nexus of her family, regardless of what kind of family she's in, whether she's in a, you know, all courts, you know, kinds of family, that it is the power to change the world. And I think that it's more important now than ever for for women and for midlife women because we've lived we've lived a long life now and it's time for us to really rest in our power because frankly we are at a moment in our collective especially in the United States but across the world where women are continuing to be disempowered so we really need to learn how to relax into who we are and speak from that place and and do it in our own way you know so do it in our own way do it through pleasure do it through play do it through, you know, speaking up doesn't have to be in a, you know, very aggressive way. If, unless that's, unless that's how we do it, do it through podcasts. Right, Exactly. (laughs) And invite people in. But I think it's really important for women in midlife 
um, to, 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 to let all of that shit go, frankly, and just to fully realize how badass we all are, because we're still standing here. The fact that we're still here in this moment and that we are showing up as mothers and are taking care of ourselves and our families, that is the definition of badassery as far as I'm concerned. And the world needs us and needs our contribution more than ever. So I'm so happy to get to support that. I'm so happy to be here with both of you and just really appreciate the invitation to sit with you. And I just love what you're doing. So thank you. Thank you for being here with us. I mean, and the words you're speaking are so powerful. And I know many a girlfriend right now is leaning forward. How can I get me some of Stacy? <laughs> so will you tell us how women can learn more about you and, and learn a little bit more about your work? Thank you. Yes, you can go to my website at um, www.dancing-tree.com. And I am offering a mini course. So it's a mini course. It's actually videos with me, um, which is how to start following energy. And so I lead people through a process of learning how to connect with yourself, learning how to identify a need, learning how to work with a fear. And it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, a week of um, a video mini, mini course with me that you can sign up for if you go to my homepage. And also if you just go to dancing dash tree slash free, then you can also sign up and I'm very available. I actually really love connecting with people. So, so if you go to my website, you'll find all sorts of videos and ways to shoot me an email. And I'm always happy to, um, to do a 20 minute zoom and connect and I offer individual sessions. So I, I work with people that way. I actually do couples work. I hold women's dance ceremony. I have a book. So there's lots of ways to, uh, in, engage with me. And I see people virtually as well as in person, uh, on the Pacific, you know, Pacific coast in California. And you'll find all of those links down below in the show notes. So if you're frantically writing those down, just scroll down below and you'll see all the ways to reach out to Stacy. And um, wow, I am leaving this conversation about motherhood and midlife feeling calm and feeling seen. I feel like there's a collective seeing that you have um, graced us all with, Stacy. So I just thank you so much for joining us, girlfriends, and chatting with us and bringing your wonderful, big, bright spirit with you. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much for having me and blessings on this amazing journey of this podcast. I hope it just flies high and I trust it will. Oh, thank you so much. Thank All you. right. Until next time. Bye, girlfriends. Thank you for tuning in today to Girlfriends of a Certain Age podcast. Do you have a girlfriend who needs to hear this message? Share this episode with her. She will love you forever. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate, and comment wherever you get your podcasts. Stay tuned for more episodes where we discuss more hot topics about girlfriends living their best lives. You can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and girlfriendsofacertainage.com.